Hi. You know that famous Christmas song? It's got me thinking. Would a partridge actually sit in a pear tree? Now, a partridge, that's a member of the pheasant family, and by and large, they build their nests on the ground. So, uh, no, a partridge wouldn't live in a pear tree. That's very interesting, Dr. Rob. But of course, there's more interesting things to Christmas carols. Hi, I'm Laura from the Australian Youth Choir. Singing carols has been a Christmas tradition for a very long time. But how do these songs come to life? How does our inbuilt musical instrument work? To sing, you need to use many different body parts, but the most obvious is your voice box. Your voice box, or larynx, is in your throat. It houses vocal folds made from soft tissue. When you breathe in, air enters your lungs. The larynx muscles keep the vocal cords closed until enough air pressure has built up. A controlled exhalation forces air through the vocal cords and they open and close hundreds of times a second. This causes them to vibrate and make a sound. Sounds are amplified in the chest and head, while the teeth, tongue and lips are used to articulate the words of the song. But of course, the most important part of singing is your breathing, which is helped along by your diaphragm and rib muscles. Good posture is also important to open up your chest and allow as much air into your lungs as possible. So that's some of the basics on how you sing, but what about singing in a group? Well, to do that, we need to practice, so we come together to rehearse. Every rehearsal begins with a warm-up. Just like you warm up before exercising, you warm up your body and vocal cords so you can hit those high notes. For a choir to sing well together, everyone needs to be able to have good pitch, tune, and to be able to stay in time. Sometimes, choirs all sing the same tone in unison. Other times, two or more different notes are sung together. This is called harmonising. The different notes are sung by different groups. In our choir, the altos sing the lower tones, while the sopranos sing the higher tones. There are some certain rules and patterns to follow when singing in harmony. For example, the first, third and fifth tones of the scale work really well together. Of course, there is one member of the group who doesn't sing at all, the conductor. Conductors know the piece of music back to front. Their job is to keep the beat and to prompt the choir during difficult parts of the song, like harmonies or canons. So that's a little insight into the world of choir singing. I guess the only question that remains is, what exactly is figgy pudding? Well, uh, we'll leave it for next time. Good time. Ha ha!